dark night in Los Angeles. The chief has been busting my ass about this murder case, but I think I know how to solve it. It's time to pay someone another visit. Evening, Star. Detective? What are you doing in here? You know the truth about the murders, Star. Murders? What murders? Cut the crap, Star! I know you're behind all those murders. Now tell me the truth before I send you to the gas chamber. Okay, look, Detective. I'm not supposed to say anything. It'd, they'd kill me if they found out I told you anything. I, I do know how to catch the bad guys, but you didn't hear it from me. Take this. It'll help you. Yes, Nintendo fans, the Switch not only brings us a game from Bethesda, but now a game from Rockstar. It's L.A. Noir for the Nintendo Switch. The story follows Detective Cole Phelps as he investigates challenging cases in the streets of, well, L.A. This is meant to be an interactive throwback to the noir films that were big in the late 1940s. A World War II veteran comes home, becomes a cop, and solves big cases. At first, it seems like each case is its own self-contained story, but as you play, you discover a rather intriguing, overarching story that presents good drama and mystery, although a few story elements take a while to make any sense. Visually, L.A. Noir on the Switch is impressive, but also shows how old the game is. The environments in the open world still look about six years old, and the rain effects are pretty mediocre, but the character models are good quality, particularly in the facial animations, which is really important for this game, since a big part of this game is reading the facial expressions of the characters to see if they're lying or telling the truth. Although, occasionally, the facial animations can look off. Well, the frame rate is pretty consistent, and the graphics don't look that old. Overall, decent visuals for this port. With sound, there's good sound effects, good noir-style music, but the best part is the voice acting. Voice acting is another important thing for this particular game, so it's good that all the voice actors do fantastic performances. They definitely have a lot of chances to show their acting chops here, since honestly, this game is at least 50% cutscenes, in case you needed any more proof that this is a heavily story-driven game. My only minor complaint with the sound is that every time a World War II flashback comes up, it's suddenly a lot louder than everything else. The main focus of the gameplay is detective work. With each case you're given, you have to do everything a real detective would do. This means more work for your brain than other open world games. You're searching for clues everywhere you go that you can later use when interviewing suspects. So after this exploration challenge, it's about getting as much of the truth as possible out of everybody. This means reading their facial expressions, hearing their tone of voice, and keeping clues in mind to see if you should believe what they say, scare the truth out of them, or prove that they're lying. It's a lot trickier than you might think. There were actually quite a few times I picked the wrong tactic. Some people will enjoy this type of gameplay, while others will get annoyed by the more confusing interviews. Sometimes I got annoyed since some of the choices you were supposed to make didn't make a lot of sense. What do you mean, go good cop with him? He's a shady guy who is clearly hiding something! Ugh. On top of that too, the outcome of each choice was usually unclear. Sometimes a good cop was just a softer type of intimidation, for example. Maybe that's what it's like to be a cop, but I didn't like how confusing the interviews got a lot of the times. My lovely partner in crime, Millennial Star, is actually the one playing throughout a lot of this footage. She got to exercise the skills she learned from studying criminal justice. Thanks for your help, babe! And yes, it is that accurate of a detective simulator. You spend less time fighting and more time solving mysteries, sometimes with elaborate puzzles. These were cleverly included in the game and actually helped to make investigating more interesting. The cases were all set up in such a way that you felt like a real crime investigator. There is barely any hand-holding from this game. You are expected to solve the mysteries using your own smarts. This is a nice change of pace from the usual GTA clone. Like any open world game set in a city, you do get to drive around. Driving controlled decently well, and there were some fun vehicular combat sections. But they also got frustrating since unlike other open world games, your car can't drive through nearly as many things so easily. You'll end up crashing a lot instead. It makes sense for the approach this game is taking, but it's still frustrating if you're used to games where the environments are more destructible. But there are times you could just have your partner drive for you. You also have on-foot chases. They are pretty fun sequences, especially when there are a lot of rooftops to jump and things to climb. My only issue is how frequently they can come up. When they come up too frequently in a case, it can feel repetitive, and I wish they would do a bit of a better job in mixing the other types of combat in, which this game does have. The other two types are gunfights and fistfights. Gunfights use a familiar cover system and for the most part play pretty well, except there's no ammo counter anywhere so you don't know when you have to reload it until your character reloads automatically. They could have fixed that easily. The fist fighting felt awkward at first, but I got used to it. 
You can use the motion controls for fist fights, which almost works perfectly. It usually feels more confusing. Not quite as spot on as the fighting motion controls in The Godfather on Wii. Overall, there is a good amount of combat here to prevent the pacing from feeling too sluggish. This is good since the open world itself isn't that exciting. I mean, it does have very authentic environments for 1940s LA, and there are a lot of hidden vehicles to find, and other collectibles, and some crimes that pop up for you to stop in the city. But otherwise, there's just not that much to do in it outside of the main story. Because of this, the game tends to feel pretty linear aside from being able to sometimes investigate some locations in any order you choose. I do emphasize sometimes. Being that this is Rockstar's first game on the Switch, they took the time to add Switch exclusive features of motion controls and touchscreen for undocked mode. These are pretty good additions to this version. The touchscreen controls especially, it added more immersion into investigating the found clues. LA Noir isn't for everyone, but it is nice to see a game like this come to the Switch. For those looking for a good mystery solving game that really puts your brain to work, this is a good game for you, though I don't know about paying full price for it. Like I said, it has its fair share of annoyances. Hopefully this game gives other third party developers ideas of how to bring their games over. And that's my review of LA Noir for the Nintendo Switch. If you like this review, check out my previous reviews of the Godfather Black Hand Edition for the Wii and LEGO City Undercover for the Switch. See you all next time. Exactly what I expected. We were looking for a low achiever.